Gabon. I shall ask you to all stand up, and char char charge your glasses, and I'd propose the toast for the good health of General Mohozike Nirugawa. Thank you, Your Excellencies. His Excellency, Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, and all protocol as previously set out. First of all, I congratulate Mozi on his 48 years. <clears throat> on earth. Whenever I you call him Mohozi, but me, I call him Mogi. I call him Mogi because my neighbor in Dar es Salaam was General Tito Okero. I was stay, we were staying in a flat which was up here, and he was in another flat which was on the ground floor of the neighboring block. And you know, actually, I've got problem with some letters of the alphabet. <laughs> so Tito Kero could not pronounce Muhozi. So he would say, Mama Mwogi, Mama Mwogi. <laughs> so that's what, that's what I call Mwozi, Mwogi, Mwogi. So I congratulate Mwogi. Unfortunately, General Tito Kero is not here. He went, but there is another Okero who is here. Now, Okero was a young teenager when the Moses were, were children. So, sometimes, Mama Jennifer, the mother of Tito Okero, of Okero here, Henry Okero, would allow them to come and help stay with these Moses when Mama Janet was out. She would ask Mama Jennifer. She was like her auntie, the mother of Okero. So, Mwogi, congratulations on 48 years. I want to thank Moses' friends on the spontaneous manifestations which I, I saw the, yesterday in Ishaka, in, in Kampara, here. Uh, thank you for... <laughs> I want to thank His Excellency Paul Kagame for responding positively. to Moses' invitation and coming to 
pay a visit to Uganda after a number of years of not coming here. Mohozi was, was a gift to us in our young days of struggle because Uganda was very unstable and as you heard, we had got married in exile, 1973. And uh, when I see you wasting a lot of money on weddings and so on, I feel sorry for you. Because for us, we had only about eight people who, who were at our, at our wedding. But this did not stop us from making a family. So when I see young people wasting a lot of money on weddings and so on and wanting to getting into loans and debts, I think you are you could learn something or two. Mhoz was born on the twenty fourth of April nineteen seventy four. We were at Kurasini in Dar es Salaam, a suburb of Dar es Salaam. He was born at Ocean Road Hospital. Mama Janet was driven to hospital by a Dutch lady who was staying above us, who was a friend of Mama Janet. The following day, the 25th of April, 1974, I rang Comrade Samara Machel, the president of Frerimo, to inform him that I had, uh, we had got a, a baby boy. But Samara said, no, I, I, I can't speak with you long on the phone because I'm listening to Radio Portugal because there is a revolution going on in Portugal which caused the changes in, uh, led to the independence of Mozambique, independence of, of, of Angola. So therefore, Mhozi we could say was the earliest Kadogo of the, of the resistance. <laughs> he was only second to Julius Kategaya. That was the, the first boy, first young person who was born in our struggle, Julius Kategaya. But Julius Kategaya never took interest in, in politics. So that's why you don't know him. But he was actually the first. So Mhoz was one of the Arika Dogos. And he, he, he was also an, he's also an Ali veteran. Because we were arrested at Chireka by our, our UPC allies when we were just driving, you're going to collect our car from a garage, the UPC people arrested us at Chireka. And I think they were planning to send us to, to, to God, but a force from Kololo, our force involving uh, some of the, of the people who are here, Salim Sare, Poro Kagame, uh, Fred Rijema, they came and rescued us from uh, that. Uh, roadblock. Now, most that time was like six years or five, six years. 
So I don't know what impact it had on, 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 on him, because he, he was part of the prisoners of war, <laughs> the PWO. So I want to thank Mama for looking after the children when, when, they, were in, when they were in exile. And we were fighting. Moho studied well with this group here in Kampala parents, Budo, Chisubi, University of Nottingham. Now, when he finished university, you know, in my in, in my in my family, there's a lot of. Uh, hard-headedness, people like to do, they, they are not easy to, to control. So when he finished university, I told him that, uh, in my opinion, he should first join the army because it would build his character. Army is good for character building. Even if he didn't want to be in the army, but if you have a child, let him go there for some time and, and build character. He can go and do other things, but it, it helps. It's very good. But he teamed up with his uncle, Sare. They went into business. So they lost, uh, we lost like a year or two when they were busy with business, business. During that time, I took advantage of Moz to run my farm at Kisozi. So he did some work there, some, uh, I remember he made the, the fire breaks, the roads around the farm. But eventually he listened to my advice and went to Sandhurst. The course at Sandhurst was uh, quite tough. The, because in, in Western academies, they emphasize running. I don't know why, why they run so much. Instead of why do we get it as we emphasize walking? So, so there is some issue there. But Mohos managed the course and uh, qualified well and joined the army. By this time, he was married and he, I think he had already got uh, Hama or one of the children. Now, since that time, Mohos has done uh, the other courses which they told you about, the company commander's course in Egypt, senior staff and command in Leavenworth, USA, NDC, South Africa, a tank course in North Korea. I have sent him to all sorts of places, North Korea. They were in North Korea, they, they, they had quite an adventure there, where they did a, a tank course. Who went with you there? Uh, some, oh, here, yeah, Naamanya was one of them, and, and the others uh, uh, sit down. So they know what was happening there. And then, he also did a paratrooper course a paratrooper course in the USA, in Fort Benning, Fort Benning, Alabama. Is it Alabama? Georgia. By that time, he was a museum. How old were you that time? 30 or something? 
Ah, he was a mzee because that course is done by teenagers. It's, it's done by people of 18, 19. So when there are this man, a middle-aged man, jumping with them, they saw a mzee. Uh, paratrooping with them. Now, the Muhozi and joining the army is something that is, should gradually uh, happen, people like Muhozi, because you see, Part of the problems you see in Africa, some of them are structural. Much of Africa now is in chaos. Mali, all those countries, Burkina Faso, many, many countries have, have got security problems. And some of them are due to the structure of the army but also, in a way, the structure of the society. It's not only the army, even the other institutions, the ministries and so on. Because in the army, if you join for mercenary reasons, you join the army for money. For money. Or as a career, as a job, or with an employee mentality. Or as a passion, a passion or patriotic reasons. Those four words, mercenary, careerism, career is a job, a job, a job, a job, employee, or are you joining for patriotism and passion? The society in Uganda is changing. The middle class is, is growing. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear some of the children. There is one girl whom I contacted. I wanted her to do some, do some work. And, and she told me in your English, no, that's not my passion. And I, I was very happy to hear that. I, I, I don't want that job because it's not my passion. This is a new language for, 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 for Africa. Because I, I, one time in, in Tanzania, I was with an army officer who was helping us in our, our, our operation. He quarreled, with the, he quarreled with a taxi, a taxi driver. And they, they exchanged hot words. Now, but I was disappointed because he, he, he told him in Swahili, stake kumwaga wunga wangu, wache and kuwache. Meaning that I would have fought you but if I fight you, I will be dismissed from the job. I, 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 will, I will lose my, my bread. I, I really felt uh, sorry. He didn't want to, to fight because of discipline, but because he feared to, to lose hunger. Now, that meant 
that mentality for any institution, forget uh, army, is not good. So therefore, people like Mozi, he joined the army not because of Unga, not because of uh, a job, but like the other girl, the other one of the, of the wonderful English of yours, because of passion. <laughs> so if you get more, if you get more of those people manning these institutions, you are going to get stronger state. The state will be stronger. So when Mohozi joined the army, I could, I, I, and I've been exploiting him. I've been exploiting him, but when, because when he joined, with him, there's no selling of army fuel. No stealing of army fuel, no stealing of army rations. You heard what some of them were saying about the infrastructure which was developed here in SFC, using the money which was there. So therefore, Moz has made uh, some contribution, his own contribution to the building of the UPDF. He helped me with the developing of the commandos. Because part of the problem of the UNRA, or of the NRA, was guerrillaism. They like to be guerrillas walk on foot and so on, because they, they were tough, they could walk on foot. But we needed, a, a, one time I created a, a Hellborn company, and I attached, I attached it to General Sare when he was in the fourth division, in, in Gulu. Next time he had turned it into a zone of force in Kilaki Hills. Because this concept of commandos was not in his head. But when Mohoz came, he, he, he really developed it. The other, the other element, which is part of the other one, because if you don't have a passion, then you have other issues. There's what the, what the Wanyankore call Chitandugaho. You are not corrupt yourself but you don't want to report those who are doing bad things because they shouldn't misunderstand you. Uh, actually, this is part of, this is part of, the, tra of, the, of the tradition. Nagamba, Evio Mashenyero. Children are not supposed to report on one another. When you do bad things in the Mashenyero, when, when you are looking for firewood, you should not, they should stay there, should remain your secrets. But with the institutions, like the army, when you don't report bad things, you are killing that institution. So that, that struggle of first of all, working for passion, secondly, not tolerating any, any wrong, being a reporter. You know, Africans don't like reporters. Naregana. Naregana. He is fond of reporting on others. According to the Banyankore culture, it's not good if you are Kuregana. Kuregana is to report. So and so did this. Ah, you're not supposed, even if you see it, you should just keep quiet. But that's how these institutions die. The institutions die. So one time, a member got accident from near Karuma. 
and Mohoz was a new, a new officer. They, they, they counseled him, that, you see here, you don't report things like this. <laughs> you, you keep quiet. This is how they, they, they are bringing the traditional Oktaregana. It's called Oktaregana. This is fond of reporting. Uh, they, they are bringing it now into a modern institution like them. That's very dangerous. But Mo said, no, this cannot happen. I will have to report it. So therefore, you can see that Mohozi, from his, from his group, he has been having also quite a bit of struggles in, in this in, in institution. Mohozi and others helped me with the issue of uh, feeling the, you know, a lot of our people, our, our commanders died because of AIDS. When AIDS came, many, many of our commanders died. Many, many, big number. These people know them. So I was getting concerned, and I, 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 I contacted the young people, including him, who said, please, you bring your colleagues who are in the school system. Let them come and join the army. You remember that time when there were stories in the papers that Mohoz was building a private army? There was a story, big story, in parliament. I am the one who had, like His Excellency Kagame, said that when you say a messenger, you, you suspect the one who sent him. I, I, I am the one who had sent Mohozi and the other young people to, 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 to bring young people to, otherwise the army was going to, 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 to collapse. So I'm very glad they, they brought many young people uh, who, joined, who joined the, uh, educated, who joined the army and were, were able to fill the gaps. Now, recently, the, the, he discussed with His Excellency Kenyatta, because they are, they are friends, and then he told me about the, 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 the issue of, of, of Rwanda, and I, I, I sent him, and that's how we see our situation has, has has improved, and I thank uh, His Excellency Paul Kagame. <laughs> for responding positively. <laughs>